Good morning. Welcome to Bethel Baptist Church Devotional. Uh, I've been continuing in a study of worship and what it means in scriptures. And I've been starting from Genesis and I plan to go through the entire Bible from one end to the other and study on worship. Today, I want to bring your attention to Psalm number 96, where it talks about worship again. And uh, I'd like to read Psalm 96 to you. Then I want to just go over a few verses in your devotional. And I hope it's something you'll meditate on for the rest of the day. Uh, starting in verse 1 in 96. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song and sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord, bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among the people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord, uh, give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before his courts. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established that it shall, should, shall not be moved and shall judge the people righteously. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar and let the fullness thereof. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice there before the Lord, before the Lord, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with truth. You know, as uh, in that verse, in verse eight, oh, worship the Lord. Uh, the psalmist brings out the fact that all creation worships the Lord. And if all creation's worshiping the Lord, the apex, the last, the final created thing, that's us, should be the one that would worship him the most. And uh, if all the world is worshiping him, all the earth and all the creation is, that is certainly something we should do. And of course, it says, it starts out in the psalm about singing unto the Lord a new song. That word new, and that's what trips me up a lot in scriptures. You will find that too. You'll be reading something and then just a single word, a three-letter word here trip, uh, trips me up, a new song. And I got thinking, you know, God is so awesome, so powerful, so big. Not one song would ever suffice to praise His. Think about it. Not one song. We need to write a second song to praise Him. And then a third and a fourth. And the songs, are uh, they often are different uh, uh, maybe topics and, and so forth. God is so big that not one song will do. Many songs will do. We got to continue to write new songs, new contemporary songs that we hear today. Uh, we, we need new songs to worship God for he's so big, so, so worthy to be praised, worshiped and honored. And so when I was looking into that verse, sing unto the Lord a new song, sing unto the Lord all the earth. You know, and that includes us, right? Where to sing. And we sing out to the Lord uh, the best we can. Some, sing, some of us sing well, some don't. Some on tune, some off tune. It doesn't matter. It says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, as it says in previous Psalms. And, and so we are to sing unto the Lord. The verse that really caught me was in uh, verse 9 of this chapter. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Beauty of holiness. And I got thinking, beauty of holiness, you know, because uh, holiness is, is beautiful. And uh, it, it's not just a state. You know, holiness means separated. And uh, sometimes uh, in, in the many years that I've been uh, going to church and so forth, I've often taken and thought of holiness as being very sterile and very uh, discreet. And, and, and man, you better do that holiness right. And God is holy, and 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 woe, wow, woe is me, uh, and and uh, yes, that's true. But we ought to recognize it for what it is. It's beautiful. Holiness is beautiful, and uh, we should be thankful 
um, that, uh, it, that he is holy and that we benefit from his holiness. The, the beautifulness of his holiness is it, it's not for our benefit as well. And then when we see him in his holiness, his separated state, that, that gives us a cause for rejoicing, gives us a cause for praise uh, for, for his uh, holiness. So therefore, it's wonderful and beautiful that our God, uh, the only God, is holy, and it is an attribute about him. Uh, so that uh, we need to be thankful for that holiness that, that he's got. Um, Another note that I have is, although the scriptures are inspired by the Holy Spirit, that we often forget is written by the psalmist and a man. You know, um, as you read the scriptures, uh, keep this in mind that it was written, uh, it's a call to praise by a man to you. Uh, you know, when a pastor or worship leaders and so forth, it's a call out for us. It sings unto the Lord. You know, it's a, uh, you know we can sometimes think that this is a command from God. But it's one man looking at another and saying, sing, sing, sing unto the Lord. Give praise unto him, worship him. And then it goes into the reasons why that we ought to do that. And so that was one of my notes. I was just thinking about here's a one man uh, and he's encouraging us to sing unto the Lord. He's encouraging uh, and saying among the heathen in verse 10 that the Lord reigneth. We are to tell, we are to be a witness and so forth. And so uh, I think that's important that we keep remembering a lot of scriptures written by man, inspired by the Holy Spirit, of course, and that uh, it's us that we ought to. And so we ought to encourage one another constantly. So what is the reason for all this talk from the psalmist and Psalms? Because God is coming back. Uh, God is coming back. And uh, it says so in this verse again, before the Lord, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. Wow. You know, it's going to be great when he comes back. There is no pulling any fast ones. When he, as a leader, talks to us, it's always truth. And it's always for our benefit. And, and uh, so we can hardly wait till we have the righteous judge that comes back and uh, for God to come back and rule and reign with us. And so in Psalm, uh, in, uh, in verse 13, it talks about that. He's coming back. He cometh uh, to judge the earth uh, and the world with righteousness. I hope today's devotion that it was a help to you about worship, about his holiness, about the beauty of his, of, of his holiness of worship, about singing unto the Lord, about creation also singing uh, about uh, unto the Lord and giving him glory in that we as his created uh, ones, the created man, the, the last that was created, we ought to be loving and worshiping him today. I hope and pray that today, uh, that this devotional, that you'll meditate upon it and think upon it. And I would encourage you to read Psalm 96 as well uh, and let it bless your soul, let it bless your, your mind. And that it'll be, uh, as you go through these and rehearse what I already just talked to you about, and that it add to it your own self, the things for the Holy Spirit for sure will uh, 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 witness with your spirit as you read through the word of God and encourage you along the way. God bless you for the remainder of this day.